Welcome back to the channel, everybody. As promised, I have a very special guest today, Crypto Coffee. Matt is his name. Say hi, Matt. What's going on, everybody? Thanks for having me, Ben. Uh, if you're part of the Hex Pulse Chain community, you probably already know Crypto Coffee. If you are not, then you probably are not familiar with him at all. But I think he's one of the more underrated influencers out there. I it, I first discovered your channel. I'm not really sure how, Coffee, but um, I looked at the traction and I noticed you're getting like 10,000 views every video. Some video, videos were getting 30,000 views, tons of comments. So for one, because you only talk about one ecosystem, so that's very impressive uh, traction. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, that, that was back in the bull market. Now I'm still getting a few K, you know, five to 10 K. So clearly we're still here, but uh, the pulse chain delays have been boring for some people. It, it Like it's partially like, we'll talk about it later. It's partially like building up the hype, but then it's partially just people getting annoying. A little bit of both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But things are going well still. I mean, the fact that I still regularly get, you know, five to 10,000 viewers on my channel, um, the bottom of the bear market, it's, uh, you know, we're not going anywhere. And, and for somebody who just talks about one ecosystem, like I've never really heard of that before. Usually people get that kind of traction or more. They talk about a bunch of different ecosystems, but you just talk about one. That's true. Yeah, I checked out your channel. You seem to be pretty across the board. Um, I was just curious, you know, what, what are your favorite coins that you're looking it's, at? I know you're a Hex fan, but... Uh... Yeah, I cover a couple. I cover uh, Algorand. They're the local Boston blockchain. That's where, that's where I live. Um, cool. Pulse and Hex, chain, uh, uh, Hex and Pulse chain. I think it's one of the best communities out there. Huge community. Um, and then just, uh, any, any sort of just new coins, new communities, nothing really specific. Um, there's a coin called Jasmine, a Japanese coin. I get so many requests to cover, to cover that one a little, so I'm kind of sort of all over the board there. Yeah, that's cool, man. Cool. Now let's uh, so the big news for the day, um, so we had booked this last week. This was before the big FTX Binance drama. So I have some opinions on this. Just what, it just it talks, what do you think about the drama today? Oh, man, it is wild. You know, uh, FTX was this company, you know, I I've heard mainstream news sources call him the white knight of crypto, which is pretty laughable. If you kind of actually listen to some of his recent uh, thoughts about crypto regulation, he doesn't seem to care about the reason crypto was invented as much as we thought. He seems to be more of an opportunist uh, here to make money. And he was the guy going around buying up all these failing companies, Voyager, Celsius, Every, every centralized middleman company that has been failing in the bull, bear market because they were underprepared and mismanaged people's money. This is why you don't give your keys away, by the way. But Sam Bankman Free, owner of FTX, which is a, an exchange for those that don't know, also heavily invested in Solana. So when you hear FTX and Solana, you can think Sam Bankman Free. Some people call him SBF. Um, he was a, this alleged white knight, you know, not really. I'm not going to say he's really your friend. He's just a businessman, right? And uh, he gave off this confidence that he was, he had things under control. He was the guy saving and bailing out all these companies and building an empire in the meantime, quietly. But research just came out. So uh, I guess they're heavily tied with a company called Alameda Research, which is basically, it's not so much a research company. The, the name research kind of covers up. It's, it's common for businesses to do that. Like they'll call themselves XYZ Research, but really they're, you know, a trading company. And so they were executing trading strategies a lot on behalf of FTX and a source of their revenue. Um, but it just came to light uh, that CZ kind of exposed that they're actually having a bit of a liquidity crisis, meaning they're not completely insolvent, but they have a lot of money that they can't account for. I think I've heard $6 billion um, allegedly in like valuation that that's not real. And so CZ, because he owns so many coins, he actually helped incubate FTX back in the early days. For those that don't know, CZ, Chengpeng Zhao, is the CEO of Binance, a company that's even older than FTX. Um, well, Binance kind of helped FTX get their legs, from what I hear, uh, when with this CZ versus Sam Bankman free drama. And during that time, I guess he was given maybe half a billion tokens or something like that. Um, maybe it was 500 billion, but Anyway, it was something like half a billion. Sam Bankman Fried owned 1.3 billion. And then the whole company itself was only worth like uh, $3 billion or something. And so with the valuation of these FTX tokens being in the, you know, higher than $20, everybody figured, well, why are we valuing these tokens at 20 bucks if the whole company is only worth like $3 billion? Because the market cap of FTX alone is in the multiple billions. It's way overvalued. Um, so by exposing this gap in their their balance sheet, the markets kind of said, oh, wow, I guess they really, these tokens really should not be worth that much if they're representatives to any degree of how well the company is doing. 
we, we had a drastic sell-off today. I think FTX crashed 60%, and we'll see how long it stays there for. Um, with CZ actually offering to step in and buy out the company. Um, so they they put in an offer to buy out the company, but really it's not so much a, a set in stone offer. I mean, it will it will become more clear as time goes on. But uh, right now there's basically CZ saying, hey, remember that time you gave me all those tokens? <laughs> He's like, what if I sold all those tokens? You know, I have the ability to basically crash you guys to zero if you don't tell me what's going on with your balance sheet. So he's like, I want some due diligence, bro. Like show me where all this money that you're claiming you have is coming from. So he's kind of forcing Sam Bankman frieds hand by saying, bro, I'm going to dump all those tokens you give me. I'm going to, I could obliterate your company tomorrow. You better show me what's going on. Make sure you're actually solvent. Make sure you don't have any uh, liquidity crunch crisis as they, as they are saying, and they're calling it a liquidity crunch. Um, so from what I understand right now, the fact that CZ actually has the power to do that is pretty remarkable. I didn't realize that, you know, the economic ownership was so centralized uh, in terms of CZ and S Sam Bankman-Fried owning 90% of the coins. I mean, no different than Hex, by the way, except that Hex is not an actual company, so you can't really have this. Anyway, I digress. Um, CZ is now undergoing a kind of due diligence discovery process to see where all these assets are. And may or may not bail out FTX unless some other, you know, new white knight wants to come out in the meantime during this process and offer up $6 billion to basically bail out FTX and probably become, if not the entire owner, like a pretty heavy seat at the table at FTX. So Sam Bankman free needs help. It's either going to be CZ or somebody else. Um, but it sounds like they need help, judging by the fact that there's a big hole in their balance sheet. That's what I get out of it. Yeah, I agree pretty much. And then it's it's, it's a non-binding offer. And the offer was announced when the FTX token was only down about 30% today. Now it's down about 65 to 70%. So, I mean, it, it is a non-binding offer. I mean, who knows? It's about $7 a share. Who knows if it's ever going to go through now? Yeah, I don't even know what FTT coin does. Do you, do you know what it does? Uh, it's just the, the typical offers, discounts for trading if you use it on the FTX exchange. Mm. Um, it's it was in the top like 15, 20 in terms of total market cap before this. So it's one of the big ones. Yeah, people conflate these these like because mm -hmm. so FTT sounds a lot like BNB, right? The real utility is you buy some of these tokens and it lowers your trading fees on these platforms. But just like the Uni token, you know, with, with actually very very little use case. Same with FTT, BNB, very little use case. But people mistakenly try to tie their valuation to these tokens and the market cap of these tokens to the rough valuation of what they think the entire company is worth, even though these tokens really don't necessarily represent the company. So with the with the value of these tokens crashing so quickly, I mean, people, the market seems to be losing a lot of faith in FTX. Um, that is until they show or or get a buyer or show that they actually have other assets somewhere that didn't come to light. Yeah, this could definitely lower the asking price, whatever they agreed on. Now that the FTT token valuation is going close to zero, it looks like. Yeah, I mean, just earlier today, I guess it was uh, the market cap of FTT, which shouldn't be the same as the total valuation of the company, but people are going to conflate the two because that's how people are. Uh, fully diluted market cap is $2.5 it looks like, and the actual market cap, it looks like, is just under $1 billion right now. That was 60 to 70% higher yesterday. So it's a lot cheaper currently to fill in that gap, fill in that hole as they I've been talking about um, it's a lot cheaper today for a nice wealthy billionaire to come along. It's like FTX is on a discount boys. So it we'll see what could, happens. Could be a good buy on the dip opportunity. You never know. Yeah. I don't think FTX is really going anywhere. Um, and when something crashes this hard and I guess you got to ask yourself, is this company going to be around? I, I kind of think it's too big to fail because you know, if, if Sam Bankman freed really, was lying about his balance sheet, then I think CZ will bail him out because FTX failing as a, as a whole would just be terrible for the space, especially after every company that they've scooped up. It's it's big news, but I something in my intuition just tells me it's a little too big to fail, whether it's CZ or, or some other. What I would not want to happen is some like Fed type entity steps in and then buys them out and FTX becomes like TradFi, you know, traditional. It, it's It's almost an opportunity for the powers that be that we were trying to get away from in crypto to sneak their little tentacles in there and, and grab up FTX if they wanted to. So that's my only fear, but 
again, yeah, maybe buy the dip. Um, I mean, I'm not going to be buying this token. I've, I've not really ever had any interest. But when you see something crash 78% in a, or 68% in a day, this is a little different than the Luna crash, right? Because that's not a technical, it's not a technical failure. Luna crashed because of its poor, shitty design. FTX is crashing because people are all afraid that they're not actually solvent, that they don't actually have as much money as they said they did. But um, I feel a little more confident, I guess, if I were going to buy the dip to maybe buy this particular dip. It's Yeah, there's no one-to-one -one, like swap mechanism like Terra had with their stable coin, which that kind of without getting into the technical details, that's what caused that to go to zero. This is just strictly panic selling here. Yeah, yeah. So uh Yeah, it appears <laughs> it appears something might have like else triggered C Z last week because his he put out a tweet just all of a sudden on Sunday saying that he does not like people campaigning against him behind their back, obviously referring to uh SBF and FTX. So it, it appeared maybe he came across some piece of information that kind of proved that SPF was campaigning behind his back. Some there was some trigger, it appears, last week. That was interesting. Yeah. And especially for a company that helped FTX get its legs and get its start to then go and betray them. Um when billionaires fight, it's it makes for really good headlines, right? So and and CZ uh, CZ doesn't talk like that normally. He stays away from that kind of language, like fighting language. So when he spoke on Sunday, that's like, whoa, something must have triggered yeah, him. Yeah. And 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 from what I know, I know that Sam Bankman Fried was like the top the fourth highest uh, donor to the democratic campaign. Uh, he put in multiple millions, I think maybe, maybe either double or triple digit millions. He was fourth after like Soros and a couple of other guys. Um, that's a lot of money. And I, I don't, I don't remember where CZ fell on the donations list. I don't even think he was in the top 10, but um, and I don't know if he, if CZ's stance was simply just Republican and this is a Republican versus Democrat, but I have a feeling it was more specific I don't think these big dogs fight so much about red versus blue. They probably were ar arguing on a specific issue that would probably favor FTX at the expense of Binance. Yeah, I, I agree. I totally agree with that there. Now, with, uh, let's uh, shift topics here. So let's let's go into Hex and Pulse Chain and Richard Hart. Now, obviously, Hex and Pulse Chain has been in the news a lot lately. And then if you're not on Twitter, uh, Richard Hart has been a little kind of uh, loud lately. Um he posts photos of him in these outrageous outfits with dollar amounts of each article of clothing attached. He's tweeting a lot. Um, I, I find it funny. I think it's just great bear market entertainment. I, some people don't find it funny. I mean, what do you think, Matt? Is this good attention for the ecosystem? Not good attention mm. for Paul Sex J? Yeah, that's a good question. A lot of people have very differing opinions. Um, at the end of the day, Richard's very, uh, he goes based off of evidence right he, he acts on a very almost in a scientific manner so he sees when i post me in a funny outfit people get outraged and they give me more views and more likes and you can't argue with the analytics so he's very he's, as an empiricist he's right that he has gotten a higher following count than any other crypto influencer i know during the bear market so he says, well, this is what works in the bear market. This is what works. And a lot of people don't like that. A lot of people, what we signed up for was the old Richard, which was before he did, did outrage marketing. He did a lot of level-headed defending of crypto, defending of crypto's ideals, demonstrated a very deep understanding of crypto and the reason it was invented, adv always advocates for stuff like holding your own private keys, bringing the power back to the people, Give, gave great advice about you know self-help, longevity, how to get rich, how to have good relationships, wrote self-help books. All this stuff, if you guys watch Richard Hart's old videos from 2016, 17 till 2021-ish, um, that's the Richard a lot of people fell in love with. And I think a lot of people feel within the community like betrayed because they just don't like it. And to those people, I would say, well, if you can do a better job getting the, getting the word out there, you go do it. You know, sitting around complaining does nothing. So either you get outraged, you fall for it. And hey, guess what? It's working. Like it works on the community and it works for new people too. Um I think it's really not as big of a deal as people are making it up to be. I mean, what's he actually doing? He's buying expensive clothing and posting it on the internet because everyone's got opinions. Opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got one and they all stink, right? So all the the really common like midwit thing to say is, oh my God, look at how, how lavish he's being he, during the bear market. I'm so disgusted, like almost like wealth shaming. And then a lot of people just make up stories like, oh, he must be selling hex to afford all that stuff. It's like, you guys don't realize that this man mined 50 Bitcoin blocks in 2011. Right? He was really? rich before hacks. He doesn't need money. 
he's doing this for eyeballs and attention. And so if you don't like it, like if it's really going to bother you that much and you're already in hex and you think you can do a better job, number one, either do a better job or shut up about it and just don't watch. Like you could just press the mute button or better yet, not even go on Twitter. And I guarantee you're going to be 10 times happier if you spend less time on Twitter. So just shut up about it for the most part. I mean, a lot of these people are just crybabies or enjoy it. Get your popcorn, enjoy it. Uh, enjoy while the, the new following comes in because from a strictly numbers perspective, there are 7.5, 7, what, 7.9 billion people in the world. And there is 100,000 hex stakers. There's infinitely more potential for the people outside of the ecosystem. And I think people get so wrapped up in our own little echo chamber that they don't realize that one in 9,900, like 99.999% of the whole entire world has never heard of Hex, doesn't know much about crypto in general. And so if you get 10 new followers and five of them hate you, but five of them love you, that's net more effective than if you're just yelling and screaming within your own ecosystem to people that already, for the most part, agree. We already agree on most things. Me and you, we might like different coins, but we agree that crypto is the future. And I think we'd both agree that it's important to get decentralized, self-sovereign money into the hands of the entire world one way or another. So, you know, it's just different strokes for different folks. And also there's plenty of other influencers out there, myself included. You know, I take a more calm, level-headed approach. Uh, you know, I just did a video trying to advertise Hex the other day where I gave money away and bought people's groceries with Hex. And I tried to be more uplifting. You know, if, if I'm more your cup of tea or you're more your cup of coffee, so to speak, Subscribe to me. I'll tell you all about Hex. Like, you don't need to just sit there in front of the computer, spin your wheels, and waste all your time getting outraged. And this goes for people that are new to Hex or are already in Hex, right? If you've just heard about it, like, and if it really, really bothers you, you know, I like your opinion, Ben. I like, I'm more like you where I just kind of laugh at it because I think we realize in the grand scheme of things, this doesn't really matter. This is not really who Richard is at heart, you know, pun intended. Um, so, he really does actually care about people. He wants to get the word out because he knows, like us, cryptocurrency can actually help the world with getting financial freedom, getting across corrupt middlemen, corrupt, corrupt governments and regulations. And it brings the power back to the people. But if no one hears about it, they're not going to want to get in. And so if I had to speculate, too, I would assume that he would change up his act um, when the bull market comes back or even when Pulse Chain gets launched. And on top of that, it's not really that outrageous to me. Man buys expensive clothes, brags about being rich, like just to get attention. Like you, you see it with Logan Paul. You see it with like all types of people, Floyd Mayweather, like all these people use outrage marketing because it works. Donald Trump got elected on outrage marketing, right? So whether you like it or not, try to try to focus on the signal underneath the noise. Because if you listen to one of his live streams, I know they're long. They're about an hour and a half, maybe even two hours, but he'll straight up tell you. He's like, you guys know I'm dressing like a clown on purpose, right? And then he'll give you all the alpha. He'll go into all of his actual tangible, <laughs> actionable crypto points about why Hex is great, why crypto is great, what's wrong with it, what you should do to be successful in crypto. The man gives great advice, but if you can't see past a silly tweet that was designed to trigger you, like verbatim designed, uh, well, if you can be a little bit smarter than that, I think you're going to be in the right place. Yeah, and a lot of people don't realize he's very smart in uh, in interviews. He uh, there's his, his picture personality, his Twitter personality, but when you hear him in an interview, it's very smart. He's just put, talks like you know, kind of a you know a seasoned CEO basically. So yeah, give him a listen uh, in the interviews. Now let's talk about Pulse Chain. So you would know better than any anyone. So whenever this thing's going to launch, mm -hmm. I see people saying next month. I see quarter one, twenty twenty three. I see quarter two. If you could just ballpark it yourself, when do you think it'll launch? <laughs> I've been wrong for a year now. So keep that in mind, guys. Keep Take that with a grain of salt. But I would really love to see it in, in Q1 2024. I'd like to see... Oh, 2024, okay. I'm sorry, 2023. My bad. Okay, yeah. My bad. In, in my head, I'm always like a year ahead. Um, the documentary is coming out. It's either going to be on Netflix or Hulu or one of these big streaming platforms. There's a documentary about Hex. It's going to make Hex look even more controversial than it already does. It's going to reach millions and millions of people and it's going to be out in Q1 2023. Okay. So I think it'd be smart of Richard to launch after the documentary. Um, if I was him, I might consider doing that, but I have no idea. I have no insider information. I've never been told any insider information. So all I am is a guy on YouTube making speculations just like you. 
uh, just like you guys watching, right? So I have no special privileges, right? I don't even really talk to Richard that often. Um, he's working hard on building Pulse Chain, which is a fork of Ethereum 2.0, which is great, fantastic. I think it'll be quick to market because you don't really have to change too many things when you're forking something like Ethereum, but you definitely want to test it. And testing is what takes the most time, trying to break it, trying to find vulnerabilities. But I don't see that why it would take too much longer after the documentary gets launched. So keep your eyes out for that documentary. And that's when you can start to get maybe a little more bullish that it's nearing around the corner. It's yeah, the documentary. So it's going to be streaming. They haven't sold it to a specific network yet. They'll probably shoot for Netflix or Hulu. I'd have to imagine, but it does appear at quarter one to 2023. And that's actual filmmakers with the post-production team doing that. So that's a deadline. That's going to be, they should basically meet their deadlines. I'd have to assume. Um, but yeah, I think that part of the thing I feel like with Pulse Chain, part of the reason it's delayed is because Hex like doesn't have a corporate office. They have many less developers than most other blockchains. That's part of the reason they've been successful, lower costs, but it also means they just don't have as many developers. So the project's going to be delayed more than usual. Well, Look, that's a little bit of a, a myth. So it, I've worked in tech for many, many years. Um, I, I worked at a company, product manager, designing apps and websites for Fortune 500 companies. There's a thing called the mythical man problem where you don't just throw developers at a project and it gets done faster. People don't consider all the time it takes for, let's say a new guy comes on. Well, you got to take one of your existing guys off of what he's working on to then train the new guy up for three to six months. I mean, it takes nine months for a Bitcoin developer to get fully up to speed. Bitcoin is developed very, very slowly. And a lot of these things don't just benefit from throwing more people at it. Because once you have too many cooks in the kitchen anyway, you get less done because everybody's not in sync with each other. Everybody needs to be on the same wavelength, the same level. People don't realize that there's only like four or five developers that wrote the con uh, consensus code for Ethereum. Four or five guys wrote Prism for Ethereum, primarily. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you don't really need that many more than that. You need a good team of smart people that work well together. You don't just need a hundred more developers. So, you know, a lot of people, they'll speculate and they'll say, well, wh why isn't it getting done faster? Ask somebody that actually knows that's worked in the industry about how these things get done. Like the mythical man problem is very real. It's yeah. And uh, with other blockchains, a delay would really cause the hype to die down. That's not been the case with Pulse Chain. If anything, it's mostly just caused the hype to build. Um, yeah, well, it's, it's caused a lot of fun because everybody likes to make up their own little fan fiction narrative. Um, everybody on Twitter is just so bored that the haters are making up stories. Even the people that sacrifice are just making up stories about what they think is happening. There's absolutely zero substance behind any of these. And so I, I try not to even spend too much time on Twitter these days because all I see is just really, really frustrated and sad individuals just making stuff up. Either they hope it will fail because they've always been a hater and they've wanted it to fail because they don't like Richard. Or, you know, they've been waiting for a year and a half and they're scared now. So they're they're just making stuff up like, oh, well, well what if Richard didn't really hire the best guys? I mean, look, he doesn't really have that much money. Or what if he's, you know, in trouble or something? And then they just start making this stuff up and telling each other fan fiction narratives where when it launches, they're all going to shut up overnight <laughs> and everything's going to be fine and great. So I would advise people against just making shit up because I see a lot of that and you don't know the facts. I don't know much of the facts, right? It's being developed behind closed doors. Testnet V2B has been working fine for six months, maybe even nine months at this point. We've had confirmation from Richard that Pulse X, the trading platform, has been fine for almost a year. Like it's been fine for forever. And you can go test it out right now on app.v2b.pulsex.com. You can test all this stuff. So, really, like there's work being done. It's being done behind closed doors because you don't want to give a competitive advantage to somebody else that might want to copy your stuff, right? And now that we're forking ETH 2.0 and not Binance Smart Chain, I would expect it comes to market faster and you get to inherit all of the benefits of Ethereum 2.0 in the future when they do the splurge, the verge, the scourge, all that, all the, all the updates after the merge will be inherited by the fact that Pulse Chain is now using Prism, which is ETH 2.0's consensus layer. Okay. Yeah, no, so this... Yeah, when I was looking at all the guesses, when people think it might be ready, it does seem around quarter one, 2023. That's what people are ballparking the most. But this all does sound semi bullish, like some developments are being made. That's good. Yeah, like I'm suspicious. So one of the most prominent haters, no need to mention names, but he so like he's hating on two communities, Hex and then Cardano. I find it suspicious. He picks two communities with just like passive personality types who 
they, they kind of get along with everyone. You know, you're not going to go after like a ribble community where it's going to just, yes, drop is going to escalate like out of control. I just, I find yeah. that rather suspicious, you know? Yeah. Well, it's, it's tough with communities, right? Like I, I wish that like the top 100 people from our community or for any community could be representative of the whole thing. But when you have a community as big as Hex and as decentralized as Hex, like we're all independent. No one's a central authority. No one's getting paid for anything. We're all doing this because we really like the coin. But when you have like 10,000 people promoting something, if you take a random sample size of 10,000 people off the street, a thousand of those people are going to be either pretty dumb or pretty crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's just, that's not everybody, but it is the vocal minority that makes a lot of the uh, the FUD look bad by either fueling the fire. It's like pouring gasoline on a fire. Some haters will come after us and then they'll engagement bait some weaker minded community members to then engage when really ignoring FUD and ignoring imaginary tales and ignoring mean comments instead of fighting fire with fighter, you know, you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. And some people just can't help themselves, whether they're Cardano, Ripple, Hex, some people just can't help themselves to, to engage in the trolls. Don't feed the trolls, guys. If I had one word of advice, you'll be happier. There'll be less FUD and you're giving them exactly what they want. It's yeah, and as Sam Bank and Freed learned the hard way, fighting fire with fire, that pretty much ends bad all the time. Yeah, um, or it, it's gonna be a spectacle. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a distraction, a spectacle, and also Hex is actually holding it pretty well today with all the drama. I think it was only down about eight, nine percent. Um, like with all the drama in Hex, what what we really ended up seeing is one guy, one dolphin, one one higher holder from early days decided to get fought himself out. So he shook himself out. He sold his entire bag, which was like, I think he took like a million dollars in profit, uh, wicked the price down and it got bought right back up to 3.3 cents um, within an hour, you know, because so many people just have these nested limit orders because they're ready to buy the dip. So we're seeing incredible strength in Hex at the three cent mark. Um, and, you know, that one seller trying to wick us down, but the fact that one seller tried to wick us down and a bunch of little minnows didn't pile on on top of him gives me a lot of confidence that the only players left, at least in the little hex ecosystem over here, are have strong conviction. They're either buying the dip or they're diamond handed. And when one whale decides to dump, nobody else follows him. Everybody, despite the heaviest FUD, I mean, we've seen this kind of FUD before, by the way. You should, the early days of hex were maybe two or three times worse than they are today. I, I swear. I was there, guys. I had to fight it all. Or I had to deal with it all. But uh, yeah, this is not so bad. And the strength that we're showing at this three cent level is pretty remarkable. So is the bottom in for Hex? Maybe, maybe not. But I don't think it's as prone to dump it, dumping it the, at this point, as opposed to something like Bitcoin, where, you know, I don't know if you heard about this, but the Mount Gox coins just finally got distributed. And so those are all ready to be dumped on the open market. Um, on top of that, you factor in how leveraged everybody is on Deribit and BitMEX. Um, we could be looking at some giant wicks and giant candles down in Bitcoin. But um, for example, today we had a negative 6% in Bitcoin and Hex up half a percent. So Hex continues to be decorrelated and shows a lot of strength by literally screeching to a sideways halt for over a month. It spent over a month at three cents between three and 3.2 cents. I've never seen a crypto go sideways for that long. It just shows either just shows the lack, the strong will of the community and the lack of and the, i mean there's not many bears left to shake out i think i feel that way it's only an intuition but i feel there's not many bears left to shake out in the hex ecosystem and it's almost time that the bulls finally are in control yeah what matt's saying is so there was one buyer this just shows how profitable hex has been in the long run i guess they put an initial approximately ten thousand dollars investment into yep. Hex in 2019, and they just decided to sell last week. Um, they were the only ones, but I think they cashed out like 2.5 million. It could but, have been. I saw them cash out two big sales for like 600k and 500k, but they might have even sold more. Might have been more. Okay. Well, regardless, ten thousand dollars turned into something in the million. So it just shows how long term successful it was, and the price yes. rebounded after that. So other people did not pile on with selling. It was just one person. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Pretty remarkable. I mean. Normally, people get scared by stuff like that, but hexagons are a little bit different, I think. It's Yeah, I think crypto is all about just the strength of the community. So if you just go on Twitter, you just see how everyone gets along and how resilient they are even through the last week. 
Mm-hmm. So it's about now, and that, so when so the bear market. So when and now, obviously the FTX drama today that kind of changes it. When like I had December as going to be a prime time when the bear market could end previously because that's around the five month mark. Uh, the 2018 nuke lasted exactly five and a half months. There's a bunch of big retail conferences in December in the U.S. that could raise the market. Um, there's a Federal Reserve interest rate announcement on December 13th. They did indicate one of the next two, they might lower raise the rates by a lower improved amount. So that's going to trigger momentum. So that would be December 13th if they did it then. So I, I had December as possibly being the catalyst month to get momentum. Now I'm not sure with FTX. When do you think the bear market will end? <laughs> Voting um, question. I know. Yeah, no, there's so much going on that could trigger more downside. You know, there's all the, all the Mt. Gox Bitcoin being distributed. There's Drama going on with two of the largest crypto companies, you know, Binance and FTX, um, fighting for solvency. Um, there are the midterms are today. So after the midterms, that could be a temporary uh, bullish thing. However, there's just so there's so much else. There's so much farther down that we could go. If you look at the real estate markets that haven't totally crashed yet, if you look at like you already said, the um the interest rates, the Fed has not pivoted. I thought they were going to pivot to bow down to the, uh, you know, on, on November 6th, they had an opportunity to pivot because to try to make candidates look good for the midterms, but they didn't. So Jerome Powell just was headstrong. He did. He said, screw you guys. We're doing 75 basis points again. He says he wants to get up to maybe five to 6% uh, in terms of basis points uh, for the Federal Reserve funds rate. Um, we're at 4% right now, I believe. So there's definitely a couple more rate hikes in the future. I don't see it. And, and a pivot is not simply just reversing interest rates, but lowering them slower, like you said. So even a reduction in the size of the interest rate raises might be perceived as bullish. I don't think they're going to stop until maybe Q2 of 2023. I don't think they're going to slow down until they hit their target. And I think they're just going to keep being aggressive. So maybe we bought them mid-2023. It's, yeah, part of the re- the the it's good you brought up the midterm elections. Part of the reasons uh, Jerome Powell is a Republican, actually. So if he had lowered it by an improved amount last week, that would have caused positive metrics. That would have helped Democrats. That could theoretically be why he delayed the improved raise. Who knows? Um, even though uh, President Biden had asked him to lower it by an improved amount, he just decided to push that off. Then if he, if he does in December, it doesn't really affect the elections one way or the other. So we'll see about that. Um, so let's see. So we got about five more minutes here because I do not have the upgraded Zoom plan here before we get cut off. So okay. you you have a course like a Hex Passive Income course. So we give that a plug or a shout out here. Yeah, absolutely. If you guys are brand new to crypto, you just started, no idea where to start. Um, I do have a really, really affordable course. It's got way more value. People often ask me for an hour of my time for one-on-one consultations. And I tell them if you're brand new, this is worth way more than an hour. If you just go to hexpassiveincome.com, it's everything you need all packaged up in about eight hours of video content with all the links right there. So I don't have to be there on the phone with you. You can always go back and reference these videos and this content. All the links are there for you in a central location. It'll teach you how to get started in crypto from zero to hero, uh, from knowing absolutely nothing at all, all the terminology, the mindset you'll need, how to stay secure, how to not get scammed, not lose all your money. And then it primarily focuses on stuff like hacks. So how to buy hacks, how to stake hacks, the staking ladder strategy, which is what's working for thousands of people right now myself included. It's what I do. It's what made me successful in cryptocurrency. And I think it's what's going to make a lot more people successful during this next bull run, whenever it is. So if you have a long-term time horizon, this is probably for you. And if you're a little bit more advanced, I just started a Patreon group where it's an exclusive membership to get one-on-one consultations or one-on-one questions answered with me if you have a little bit more of a an advanced question. And you can also just contribute to future video topics that I do. Uh, you'll also get a 60% off course discount, among other things. Um, you'll get voting rights to future content. And all the money you use from that goes into future videos, such as you know, the buying people's groceries with Hex type video. So you can be a contributor towards me paying it forward uh, in the real world as I try to onboard people. And you can kind of be a part of the ecosystem and the future of that together with me. Of course, I'll also give you a shout out on YouTube or anything, but... If you're a beginner, check out Hex Passive Income. If you're a little more advanced and you want to chat in our secret membership chat room, uh, it's an exclusive private chat room. Uh, check out the Patreon. Cool. And it looked like from watching your videos, the course has been doing pretty well business-wise. You're getting a lot of people signing up, sounds like. Uh, yeah, I mean, and that, which is a good thing, right? I think because everyone that signed up is much more likely to actually be onboarded into crypto because 
when you pay money for something, you're actually serious to being committed to learning about it. So people don't value free yeah. information and free knowledge as much as they value stuff they pay for. So if you ask me, it's a very, very affordable course, but uh, compared to a lot of those other ones out there that cost thousands of dollars. And, uh, but if you do put a little bit of money where your mouth is, you're just that much more likely to one, actually complete it and two, actually be a valuable member of the crypto ecosystem. It's, yeah, so I, I I kind of agree with that point. And when you pay, when you don't buy something, it's free. You value it less. You're not going to like utilize it as much. When you actually pay for something, you're going to get your money's worth. You're really going to put all into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and then so obviously all my thoughts. So give him a follow too. It's Crypto Coffee two words on YouTube and Twitter. I, our channels are kind of similar because we. I mean, even though we're both running businesses here, there's a very sort of non corporate field. I mean, I'm in my yeah. bedroom here. You know, some channels yeah. it's clear that they've got like three or four people running it. They got a Twitter person. It's just a very <laughs> corporate field. They're still good channels, yeah. but ours no, are- Yeah, I'm a, I'm a one-man show and it looks like so are you. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'll, I'll make sure to share this video out. I'll uh, I'll shoot you, uh, everybody like and subscribe to Ben Marks over here. And uh, wh what do you do? Do you have a course as well? Uh, nothing specifically. I just, I do a uh, sponsored all coin. All the videos I do are all coin reviews. I do specific ecosystems and I do some sponsored videos too of most of the newer projects. I only accept about 20 to 30% of the ones I, of the offers I yeah. get two and 10. Um, some of them I just don't like, some of them are kind of shady. Some of them's not a product I could promote, but so uh, even the sponsored ones I do, it's still coins that I've vetted specifically and I'm bullish on myself. So it's, yeah. yeah, it's going well so far. And then, yeah, so like two minutes left. So, last, so I, last question, what, um, so are there any, like, I know there was a Pulse Chain conference, I'm big on conferences. I know there was a big event in September, Vegas. It looked like in the end it was fun. Are there any other like events coming up for just Yeah, it was a lot of fun. If you go to uh, Million Pulse Tour, hold on, let me get the website. If you go to ksb.tv, I highly recommend if you want to hang out with us, we we travel all around the world in real life and have these really awesome, fun meetups. The next one's in San Diego to celebrate Hex's third birthday, an epic party in San Diego where we also do educational stuff. And, um, you know, we just get to meet one on one and make those personal connections. But if you check out KSB.TV, these guys go all around the country from city to city. And you can check out the next time we might be in your city having a, an unofficial meetup. You don't have to wear a suit and a tie. Just bring your bring yourself, bring your kids, bring your wife, whoever. And uh, just meet the Paul's Chain and Hex community and, and meet some like-minded people that are all just after the same thing, which is financial freedom. Sweet. Yeah, I saw people, they're kind of, they think like San Diego would be a good Hex Paul's Chain unofficial quarters, uh, uh, headquarters. Uh, Vegas seems like an ideal fit too. Yeah. Well, the San Diego meetup is on December 1st through December 5th, I believe. Okay. December. Okay, cool. So there we go. We got that. Okay. So yeah, we'll say I'll, I'll stop the recording in a sec. Stay on with me. Just a sec. But yeah, so crypto coffee again. Great talk. Uh, give him a follow vice versa and I'll catch you guys tomorrow with a new episode.